When I said that this level wasn't bad before, I take it back. This level sucks. I mean, really? It's always so hard to dodge these giant green things when they're moving in erratic, weird pattern like this. Because they're so big. And of course, like, your character's sprite is so big when climbing that rope. Like, especially if you're playing as Kitty. Like, it would be more fair if the camera was more panned out, so you could see more of what was ahead of you. But instead, you don't really have much... I'm pretty sure there's a DK coin there, but fuck it. I don't like how the... How, like, the- there's blue flags if you finish the level as Kitty. Because I would rather have them all be pink flags, and at that point... Like, I know it's a nitpick, but I'd rather just not have colored flags at all. Yeah, that's how dark this level is. Like, it's immediately obnoxious. It's not as dark as it could be, though. I hate the darkness in, like, Between Worlds more. But yeah, the gimmick of this level is that you have to run into those yellow fish to light up the place. And it's not good enough that you do it once, you have to do it multiple times. And it's not like there's a time limit on screen that tells you how much time you have left. It's more like it just gradually goes dark with almost no warning. See, I got hit there because I didn't know that I was going down and heading into one of those enemies. That's gonna happen a lot. You're better off just constantly spamming the attack just in case you run into something. Like, the biggest- the biggest problem that makes playing as this character awkward is how gigantic the sprite is. So it's so easy to end up getting hit by something. Like, when I was surrounded by those clams, I had to actively pay attention to my character's sprite to make sure that I wouldn't end up to, to anticipate my movement so that I wouldn't move into an enemy. And that gets really annoying in the boss fight. This is a really boring minigame. It's I cut out most of it because it's literally just what it looks like. The music fits, at least. But yeah, this is easily the worst part of the level. Your your character is gigantic, and you're, and there's way too many of these. You can only hit them during the brief instant that you see the most pink. Like, they constantly open and close rather than being smart and just continuing to stay closed forever. I thought it was cornered there and wouldn't be able to escape and would get hit by it. But yeah, the timing for damaging these guys is so tight that it's it feels not worth it to try to attack them. Obviously, the main tip for this entire level is follow the trail of bananas. Because the bananas, like just basic good game design, the bananas will lead you in the right direction. It's a maze, but it's not nearly as bad as it could be considering that. This is like if a maze had a whole bunch of string all over it that led you in the right path. But yeah, of course when you're moving down you barely have enough time to see what's coming up ahead of you. So. But it is satisfying to, to kill the enemies when you use the, the attack against them. Like, see, I didn't- I didn't see them coming, I didn't know that they were gonna show up. And there's one instance where the bananas would lead you in the wrong direction. The original title- there was gonna be a subtitle for this game. It was Race Against Time. So, I guess that implies it was gonna be a time travel story, which would've been pointless for a platformer. That- that barely has any story at all. I guess it could have also been a game with the overall time limit, but that'd be silly. But yeah, this is a really awkward part. As you can see, I'm really struggling not to bump into these guys, because there's way too many of them. Mm -hmm. 
There's actually a lot of glitches in this game, thankfully. There's a glitch called Ability Switching Barrel, which can only be performed in the GBA remake, unfortunately. So Donkey and Diddy need to go to a place with a barrel and a crush. Uh, I was overthinking this DK coin. There's two ways making this glitch happen. There's one where Donkey Kong needs to hold the barrel and jump onto the crusher. He will not defeat the crusher and will jump to the side. In this instant, Diddy will defeat it. DK cannot defeat a crusher by jumping like Diddy. I wish they just showed us a picture of what a crusher is supposed to look like. And two is Diddy must hold the barrel and jump on the crusher's head. He won't defeat Crusha by the jump, and the barrel will fall down. And so DK will defeat Crusha. I guess that was a pretty mundane glitch. I don't really like this part. I mean, because it makes your sprite bigger. Because you, you not only have to worry about the parrot- I feel like I clipped through the ground there. But anyways, you not only have to worry about the parrot hitbox getting hurt, but also your character. It like, the barrel throws the bomb so fast with barely any warning. I barely had time to dodge that. It is thrilling going fast with this thing though. You, like, there's a run button and you use a control pad to fly it through the air. And you mash the jump button to make it go higher up. Faster. Yeah, this might as well be like, I know that in one of the Donkey Kong Country games, there's a Lost World level that's all about the the animal partners that you play as. And here, this might as well be like Animal Parade level. It's really awkward riding him because it makes your sprite bigger. Like, you not only have to worry about him, but also Dixie. So it's just anxiety inducing when you have to deal with- and the enemies are big as well. I don't see the point of them dropping bananas behind. It's not like they're rings. It's just one banana. But yeah, like this is an awkward part because it's- it requires such precise timing to defeat those clams. Although it is very convenient that the animals just go back and forth like Yoshi and you can actually pick them back up if you get hit. Like that is really convenient for a Donkey Kong Country game. I would expect them to just vanish forever. You have to press the X button of all things to jump off these guys. I was so confused that I thought I- th I thought the game glitched. So I- so I thought I had to get hit to get off the animal. Well, it is a good thing that this world constantly makes sure that you learn how to defeat the clams by putting them in your way. Because you are going to need to know how to defeat the clams in the boss later. I don't think that the elephant even has a water meter at this point. It's like they forgot to program it in. Or like, more like they specifically programmed it to not have a water level. Just for this level. Which is really weird. Just because you're riding it, it's mechanics change. Having the spiders, it's like, the only thing the spiders' unique mechanics are useful for here is getting the G. That's literally it. The spider was really an afterthought, which is so disappointing because it's my favorite animal in the game. It was definitely a creative and engaging level. But I would much rather play as the animals than ride them. It's so much easier to get hit that way. This might as well be called Cheap Shot Mountain. If the camera was panned out more, you would have more time to see the monsters coming before they hit you. Like, there, it's basically a level where you get off-screen hit a whole bunch, so you have to take it slow and be careful. But the problem is that sometimes you have to actually go fast. Because if you don't, you'll get hit by them. And I got- I went too fast there. And I got hit by something that I didn't know I was coming up to. It doesn't matter if this is the third time you played the game. You're not gonna memorize- You're not gonna memorize everything. And of course, it's always more anxiety-inducing playing It's Kitty because he's bigger. So it's much harder to dodge. 
I didn't know I was heading the wrong way there. It's a tricky level, but you could never say it was boring. Just parts like this, especially. I love being able to do that with Dixie. She definitely makes the level easier. But of course, I didn't know that was coming. So there's a glitch called Camera Freeze. The player needs to go through Oil Drum Alley. Then the Kong should get Rambi, who's in a hole by the middle gate. Then Rambi needs to go backwards before the middle gate. And the player will find a blast barrel below Rambi, resting on an area. So the player has to jump over the barrel area and drop Rambi with the A button. This will only work if the player lands back on the higher land with that jump. Then, the player could jump down, and after some tries, DK will land on Rambi at the same time as the player lands in the barrel. This will freeze the camera, most of the time on the area where the player lands, but some of the time by the barrel. So the player would be able to run off the screen to the right, and the camera wouldn't follow you. The oil drums that exist in that area don't block the player's way, and the player can keep on running until the Kongs fall into the ditch where DK found Rampy. And to bring the camera back to the Kongs and see all of the land DK covered, the player should push A to get off Rampy. And then the camera will zoom over to the player. I like the green eye- This is such bullshit, really. Like, I would like the green banana minigames more, but there should be a lot more of them. And it's such bullshit that you don't even get two hits. You get one hit, no matter what. Like, obviously, like, the, the green enemies were such bullshit. This is easily the worst boss in the game. I was dreading having to play this again from the minute I started this LP. I was wondering if I'd even be able to motivate myself to finish the LP because of it. Also, it's weird that you just clip through the ground just to get to the first phase of this fight. There's clearly a ceiling above you. But anyways, you can- It's such specific timing. Like, if you don't time it exactly right, you'll get yourself hurt when trying to knock the clans into the boss. And unfortunately, it's so precise about Sometimes you can attack the clam, and it won't guarantee that it'll hurt the boss. Like, I feel like there should be a DK barrel here. You have to stand in the southwestern corner, and hope that the missile will decide to go... Like, like go to southwest and then go to the east. And then it'll start aiming at the boss. But the problem is that you have to do it so many times because it's not like you can just aim it directly at the purple ball immediately, oh no. It has to pad out the boss. Like this is such a boring part of the boss. And it's also it's also tense because it's also tense because your character your character's sprite is so big that it's deceptively easy to get yourself hit. And of course that you have to do some very specific timing just to make sure that you'll even attack the boss. I just realized, it's basically a giant clam enemy. I guess... I guess it just didn't look enough like it, because it's giant. This part of the- This part of the boss confuses you, because you have to constantly go up and down. But, there- there are certain points there are certain very brief points where you're better off being up, and then there's those points where you have to go down. But whenever you go down, you also briefly go up to make sure you don't go too down. So, it's confusing. It's very easy to end up going up into the spikes. But fortunately, it does have a very memorable pattern. Like, you have to be up, and then you have to immediately go down, and then you immediately have to go up again. It never changes from that. Like, I cut out a few deaths, obviously. This boss gave me a lot more hell on my first two playthroughs. I was very surprised that I managed to beat it so quickly. 
Because the minute I got to it, I was thinking, oh, great. 